Hi, this is Phil Needham. We've just completed a no-till wheat into standing corn residue research study, a replicated research study. This is primarily going to focus on fertilizer in the row and different methods of sulfur nutrition in a no-till system. These corn stalks have not had a rain on them since they were harvested, so there's a lot of residue. So we are using a full set of ballast 12 100 pound weights in addition to the precision planting cedar force system that regulates downforce on a row by row basis with a hydraulic cylinder based upon the amount of downforce or margin technically on each individual gauge wheel. So it monitors it on a row by row basis and, ch and changes downforce individual individually on each row we've also got narrow gauge wheels which are important in no-till in addition to sharp disc blades when the residue is heavy not decomposed with any rain since harvest you've got to have adequate down pressure and sharp disc blades and a good closing system so that's what we're doing today no tilling into corn stalks so we're standing in the same field that we planted last night, the wheat into no-till corn residue study that we planted last night. And you can see every 12 rows, the combine was really struggling spreading residue with a standard chopper on a John Deere S series. It looked like it was spreading most of the material out of the back of the combine, six, maybe eight rows. So we strongly encourage growers to get power cast or advanced power cast, which is a lot better, it's more money, but they allow you to run the chopper on low so it doesn't tear up the chopper with the, with the corn cobs, but spread material wider up to a width of about 12 rows. The manufacturer says 16, but they struggle with 16 rows, most manufacturers do. If they spread wide, they leave a streak at both ends. So every 12 rows on center, 30 inch rows, there's a high, heavy concentration of material right behind the combine, right there. And between the combine passes, there's little to no residue at all, just the stalks and the wheat residue that the corn was no-tilled into. How do you set up a drill to plant into this in one spot and 10, 15 feet away, something like that? you can't you've absolutely got to spread residue evenly with the combine every no-till video we've ever done it seems like mentions directly or indirectly spreading residue and so many combine manufacturers haven't figured it out yet they really haven't you go to trade shows and you see combine spreading 30 foot with a 40 foot head or 30 foot with a 45 foot head it just shows you they don't understand the residue management component so our challenge from an agronomy perspective is getting wheat seeds in the ground consistently into heavy residue compared to light residue. All we can do is adequately ballast a drill, make sure it's got sharp discs, set the depth according to conditions. In this example, we had three and three showing on the back, which should put the seeds in the ground two inches or, or more with a close to 18 inch disc because but because of this mass of corn residue that's tough that hasn't been rained on you know it was putting some seeds in the ground two inches and some were three quarter to one inch but at least we got them in the ground it was dry when we planted it from a soil conditions perspective and we're supposed to get a rain soon so it should come up but i was looking last night in more detail at the as applied planting map this is a downforce map and sure enough, the precision planting row by row system that allows us to preset a margin under the gauge wheel tires, it will then apply downforce until that margin is achieved. So it simply adjusts down, downforce on a row by row basis on a drill, just like delta force on a planter or similar systems, it's ensuring ground contact. So many people struggle with ballast on a drill or getting the depth set correctly. 
or down pressure set correctly, they're not able to achieve a consistent margin on the gauge wheel tires. But this system adjusts on a row by row basis. And sure enough, when each row passed over the heavy residue bands behind the combine passes, again, 12 row corn head, corn head spreading six to eight rows material. Sure enough, it shows up, it's adding additional downforce. As you can see, even on the end rows, where it was adding more downforce behind the heavy residue bands and it backed off the, the downforce when there was less residue where it wasn't needed. So it manages downforce much better. It's a huge, huge benefit when no tilling into conditions like this. But it's a massive struggle when there's a lot of material on the soil surface like this. So we've had good luck with no-till wheat, but you've absolutely got to set yourself up for success by spreading residue evenly with the combine. Thanks for watching.